Okay, so, so let's let's start off with the obvious first starting point. We have to be clear on our workshop's objective, right? If we're going to design a workshop, we need to be clear on that. We need to be clear on that with the stakeholders. Uh, we need to be clear of that ourselves before we can put forward any kind of um, uh, so solution. You know, basically, there's a problem and we need to come to a solution and we need to do that as a group, right? Now, the, the, the challenge here, of course, is that I think there's two, two types of workshop. One is which you're trying to get decisions made collaboratively. The other is you're trying to get everything out on the table, all right, so that you're, you're learning and you're listening. So they're, they're, they're the two main different types of, of workshop. And oftentimes, I will be doing workshops with, say, um, let's take a, a regional marketing team. That will be a listening exercise. But then when I go in for a C-suite, that will be um, maybe a bit of listening, but then I want them to feel that we've actually made progress and we made some decisions. So it's, it's, it's important that the outset to be clear on, on the objectives. And um, we can talk about content in a minute, but I'll just give you some high level stuff. I mean, I think the first thing, which is an obvious thing, is your preparation. Um, yeah. So, you know, we need to be super clear on the when I say on the agenda and when I say super clear, like I'm quite a flexible facilitator. Um, as long as I've got an objective, I can I can flex in the room. And I think you have to be ready to do that um, depending on how things are going. So, for example, if you've got a leadership team and you're discussing, um, I don't know, let's say let's say you're discussing brand purpose and something comes up which perhaps doesn't fit with where the, the group's going on the purpose. Now, they have to work through that, right? Because they need to think through, well, there's this massive investment, this initiative that we've got, doesn't quite fit with that. Now, they're either going to decide um, that that initiative needs to be reconsidered or that their purpose that they've been starting to move towards is not quite right. So, and that's quite big. You can't, and you can't always know stuff like that's going to come up beforehand. So you have to be... Um, you have to have a rough structure, you have to have a clear objective, and you need to set yourself up in a way that there's a little bit of flex as you go through for, for things like that. Um, I think the other thing uh, to bear in mind is that um, having an agenda, I always like do two things beforehand, uh, if I can. I always send out the agenda, first of all, so that... Um, you know, and introduce everybody to the workshop. So a little email, I'll ask for all the participants, I'll message them, hi, I'm Matt, I'm going to be my honour to facilitate you next Tuesday. You know, this is the rough agenda. Any pre-work, senior people like to be prepared. They don't like to feel silly in the room. So I will always say something like, you don't have to uh, prepare anything formally, but have a think about your vision for the brand or the vision for the commercial interests of the company. Um, you know, you're part of the your department and what's happening right now, things like that, you know, so that they know, oh, okay, I, I, it's not going to be too stressful. It's like, I, this is stuff I, I know. Um, and, and sometimes if it's a goal setting workshop, I might get them to think through some goals beforehand before they come. So they've got that considered. Um, I'm aware, for example, that some people do not like to think, of course, like make big decisions on the spot. So the more preparation, particularly for senior people, you can give them, uh, the more opportunity for that, the better. The other, the other thing to do before the workshop is to, if you can, call all the participants individually, one-to-ones. Um, this, I find, gives you a huge um, benefit because you get to build rapport as the facilitator with them, make sure that they understand the importance of the workshop, what you're looking for the outcome is, and get their personal perspectives beforehand. So you can get a, a you know, I ask some questions like, what challenges do you think we might face? You know, have you got... How aligned are we, do you feel, on these things? You know, just to kind of get a bit of a sense as to what to expect in the room. And, you know, sometimes it's helpful to have those conversations before you've even set the agenda because you might find that of the eight people coming, four are one way, four are another way on a particular issue. So you can design a, a process to help them work through that issue. So yeah. preparation, absolutely key to any good workshop design, but then you are a designer. So you have to design the workshop. And I, I use, a, um, I use a, a saying, I call it, I don't know, it's not, I don't know if it's a technical term, but this is the way I explain it. I call it layered thinking. So 
what I like to do in a workshop, if I can, is we, uh, it's, I guess it's an, a form of design thinking where you start wide and then you narrow in and then you can go out wide again and then you narrow in. So you might um, conversion and divergent thinking, I think it's called. So, but the point is, is that the, we might have four or five exercises. The first exercise we're starting wide, but what we decide on at the outcome of that exercise leads into the next exercise. So it ladders in. And then by the time we've got to the real crunch point, we've already made a number of decisions as a group, which make hopefully the big decision kind of easier to, to cope yeah. with, if that makes sense. So I find that very helpful to align groups, uh, particularly large groups. Um, as as you go through the the, the process, right? I'll I'll try and um, give you a couple of other kind of quick tips, and then we'll dive into perhaps what a, a brand strategy workshop would typically look like. And um, I think a couple of other quick tips that I've been considering, like that, it's important to start really well. You know, particularly senior people, if you don't show up as confident and clear, and you're mumbling and you're just dull like they will switch off and find an excuse to get the heck out of that room as fast as they can because yeah. they're busy yeah. people they've got their time is valuable i always am very um, respectful i always say things along the lines of uh, you know i know how important it is um this workshop you know and, and i don't take it lightly that we've got all of you senior people in the room we're going to try and maximize our time together and with that in mind you know if possible and i always try and set my store that if possible close your laptop lids i want full attention we'll and I explain when they're going to get breaks. You know, we're going to get breaks either sporadically throughout or at lunchtime. We'll give the times. Talk about the agenda. And the important thing always, I find, is to explain why we're doing a certain exercise or why we're doing a certain thing. Because senior people, they need to, they need to understand. Um, I'm sat in this room. Why? You know, why am I doing this? Can we not just? Yeah. Why isn't yeah. marketing making this decision? Yeah. You know, so that that and that leads me to a very other you know important point, which is um, you need to educate along the way, but obviously not in a patronising way. These are very senior people and usually brilliant in their own field. But you're the expert as a brand consultant coming in. You need to give examples and case studies outside of their industry that inspires them and excites them. You need to give. You need to be comfortable you know, sharing your own stories um, about other teams who've struggled and what the symptoms usually are. And if you've done any discovery work, like, you know, we were discussing earlier, you need to reference that, you know, in our employee survey that we did three weeks ago, you know, one of the most interesting things was, you know, we didn't feel that we were applying our brand uh, look and feel consistently across all touch points. You know, 93% of our team believed that we were inconsistent. You know, that's quite a heavy stat, guys. You know, we need to work on that and we will get to that eventually but we need to work on our strategy first you know things like that like that really kind of makes sense what is a brand what is brand strategy what does all of that mean um, and what would that mean to you as leaders so you know and I reference them I like to say you know Jenny you're the head of product you know imagine if your design teams in product your UX UI teams were really really uh, kind of aligned with what's happening over there in marketing and, and the commercial team you know, this is what we on the brand stuff is going to start to do. It's going to bring everybody together. You know, you're there, Derek in HR, you know, the people team. Um, you know, we, we need to make sure that, you know, um, we're all aligned because when you're hiring people into the business, you know, you're presenting the culture a certain way, the brand a certain way then that needs to be the reality because if it's not, you're going to face high churn rates. So this should help you. You know, so there's, there's things like that that you can talk to if you've done your prep work and you've been in the space for a while that's commercial, that shows them, wow, if we get this right today or, you know, begin to get it right today, so always a process, this is going to really help us grow and scale. Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. what you want to be. You want to be the face of that. So there's kind of a, a few um, a few sort of tips um you know as cool. as you go through that's really, no those are really useful actually because yeah it's that kind of stuff it all makes sense but it kind of helps to have it said because it's just yeah it's a lot more than just going through some content oh absolutely um in terms of in terms of content though you asked about yeah. that um i guess i mean i've run hundreds of these and as we sort of talked about earlier you always have to flex, right? Every business is different. Every context is different. Every category is different. Everything's different. 
But what I try and do, and I think this is so important, you have to make things simple. And I run these, I've done these over three days, like on off-sites, I've done these over three hours. Depends on the size of the team and what we need to do. I've done them spread out, you know, three workshops over six weeks. I've done them like all together. Um, I've done them late at night. Uh, you know, if they're having an off-site in the day and, you know, they wheel you in, I've done them I've done them in person, I've done them in schools, I've done them in pubs, I've done them in boardrooms, I, I, I've done them in fields, I've done them, I did one workshop in a in a surfing, uh, in a surfing thing in the middle of, of the UK in, in Bristol, there's like this thing called the wave, right? And um, it's like a, a field with a massive kind of like, all I can describe as a huge swimming pool that kind of uh, is a massive wave machine and you can go surfing for this company. They invited me there to do their workshops. So anyway, the point is, is you, the, a couple of things on that actually, the venue is quite important. If you can set it up to inspire them, that's cool. But you can, you can flex with this. Content wise, which is where I'm getting to, um, I try and keep it simple. So usually you'll find with some of my workshops, I will um, structure it uh, if it's a, even if it's a fact finding mission, I'll try and structure it around my four big brand questions, which are basically loosely Simon Sinek's golden circle. Why do we exist beyond making money? Who do we exist to serve? Which is the one Simon misses out, which I put in there. Um, cause yeah. I think the who's important. How, 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 sh how should we show up for them? Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, and then, um, what is our unique value proposition? Yeah. Right. Yeah at a brand level. Um, and what I would do is um, when it comes to the why, I tend to split that into three. So you've got, um, I'd get them to work on a, a purpose statement. So uh, usually I give them templates. This is the thing, you've got to try and keep it simple for them. Yeah. Um, because Any examples? Of yes, I'll give examples, I'll show you things. But what I would say, for example, with a purpose statement, it'd be like, our purpose is to blank. So that blank because blank go away and fill it in and just to take that as an example let's say you've got i've done this with quite big teams of like 50 people like so some people want to fold everybody in i, I i'm not that keen on that but say it is kind of a, a company whose culture is like very inclusive and they want lots of voices you still kind of have to make a decision right so let's take that i might get um you know t 10 teams of, uh, of, of five people, right? Um, if there's 50 people. And I and this is where the preparation is important. You know, you need to make sure there's space in the room. You need to understand the layout of the venue. Cabaret style is usually the best with someone with me at the front. I always want to make sure there's a projector or a video cam, um, you know, screen. Um, you need, you know, I need to make sure that there's Sharpies, that there's post-it notes on all the tables. I used to bring them. Now I've just decided, like, I just tell people I need this and they go and arrange it, particularly if I have to travel abroad because I'm not filling my suitcase up with eight ton of post-its. Um, and then, and then, and then, you know, each table needs a, a board where they can pin stuff so we can all see all the boards. So all of that needs a bit of thought. Um, but the point is, is that then they, let's say they all do that exercise. So in your groups, and I keep it, I keep it high energy, 10 minutes. Write down as a group, you know, what you think, da, 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 and select someone on the team on your table to be the, the spokesperson. At that point, they all go crazy because they're suddenly like, oh, I've got to show up in front of my peers. You know, I want our table to have the best one, da, 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 da. So I, I always encourage that, like, you know, and then it's a bit like a game show host, right? So you're like, right, table number one, what did you say? Who's your spokesperson? Ah, oh, it's... Uh, it's Abdul. Abdul, stand up. Tell everybody. Re just do me a favor. Read out your um, your thing. And that's how I do it, right? And then we get the post-it notes. I pin them up. So table one, that's their, you know, uh, their their contribution, their um, impact, and their uh, the reason statements from that purpose statement. We can split that up. And then you'll get loads of them on the board, right? And you'd have heard from everybody. But then what you do? because you have to kind of come to some sort of conclusion. Down, yeah. I say to them, right, we're going to take a break now. But before we have our break, coffee break, um, I want you to come up to the front and vote for the best one. Or we might have an anonymous vote that's digital or something like that. Yeah. Some some companies are like worried about kind of confirmation bias and, you know, they look where the CEO goes and everybody goes there. So 
It depends on the culture of the company, but you need to have some way. And then they go for the coffee break, come back, and I'm like, right, you'll be surprised, but the, the, the first statement from table two was the most voted for, the second statement from table five, and well done to table one. You know, you've, you know, blah, blah. and then everyone gives a clap and it's all celebratory. And then we move into the next one, which would be in, in under the, the first question, um, why do we exist? I would do vision and mission next in a similar way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that would be like the first, the first question. The second question. Oh, by the way, I've also done these virtually, right? So you can run these, um, these types of workshops virtually. The second question. Yeah. And then you just do it like that. You kind of build exercises to answer all the questions. Um, so, and it's interesting then that you do go then to the sort of traditional depth of, of you know, your purpose, vision, mission. I do. And your You're doing it for long rather than kind of keeping it simple with the why and then a top line vision. You no, I, I take the, the why and I go deeper. The whole structure, yeah. yeah, but what I tend to do, and, I, and again, you need to set this out at the outset, is I often find like I did a workshop the other day with a educational trust uh, lovely people but let's be honest they're not uh, the most creative people on the planet or inspirational in with the best of respect what they do is inspirational but the way they present it is like dull so what I and and you know I do this with all of them it's not their job to, job to craft the final the final wording that's that's kind of my job as the strategist to make sure that we get it to a concise um, on-brand kind of uh, positioning. But what I do need them to do is agree the conceptual territory, uh, you know, move us into that right direction. So what I tend to, what tends to happen is that I will explain that at the outset. In this workshop, we're going to run through some exercises. We are going to come to, I'm going to get a sense, a bit of a sense with where the room is at, as you as leaders in this organisation. But it's my job to, to take that back, to think about, competitor analysis we might show a few but you know can think about competitors think about what i've heard from your staff surveys think about what, what about what i've heard from your customers and to make sure it's on point and i may even have to test some of my thinking with customers before i come back to you all and so that's kind of i play yeah. it very much like that so so that's the thing so they're kind of making a decision they want to go in this direction um, with certain things and, and as I say you're laying the foundation because if their purpose vision and mission are set which is very broad and then you go into well who do you exist to serve so it's like okay now we need to think about audience types and you know sometimes again research comes into play with that and then you go into well how do you show up for them so it's kind of like okay at that point it's good to talk about competitors in the space what makes us different yeah. what makes us yeah. unusual what makes us distinctive um and then finally, what's the unique value? That is where you're really talking about, okay, differentiation. And I won't, I'm not just a friendly kind of bubbly kind of guy by the time you get to the end. I'm challenging them because I'm saying, hold on, you've told me your purpose is to revolutionize, uh, you know, the world of soft drinks, right? And you, what you're saying here is exactly the same as, you know, Coca-Cola. Like, where, where is... Where, where are you really that different, right? And I'm pushing them and pushing them. And, you know, hopefully not completely crippling them. But I try and push them and push them. And also, the, the thing to bear in mind is that a strategy should change you from where you are today to something for the future. That's what I believe, very much. So there's a problem today, but we need to move the business forward. And we need to do that as a united leadership team. So my whole thing is, is like, we are not going to end up with basically a regurgitation of what you are today. But I don't tell yeah. them out at the start because that'll scare the heck out of them. But basically, that's the truth. We need, we, need a, we need a positioning, we need a direction that is going to set the course for the future. We need them to imagine what life could be like in that future. The, the initial workshops, though, is just getting them ready for that. And I've got to go away, think it through. And depending on what comes out, usually I come back with, maybe some aligned statements, but then I need to give them a flavor. So I might do some suggested or what, we, what I would call potential futures. So I say we could go into this territory, this based on what you've said, all in accordance with it, but there's three ways we could take it. And I now need you to go away and think that through, talk to your teams about it, do some analysis yourselves. And then, you know, let's have another workshop um, beyond that initial kind of burst of energy to figure out what we think is the most appropriate thing. And so that's kind of how I tend to, to run workshops and use workshops in the process of 
brand strategy, right? Because it isn't, yeah. some, some people make the mistake, go, right, we're going to do a workshop and that is your strategy. And it's like, these things take time, particularly for complex organizations, you know, and we need to sometimes test that with customers. If we presented ourselves in this way, what would your kind of thoughts be? You know, paint a picture of what that looks like. Um, and I've had it where there's whole product innovation, whole customer experiences bubble out and they start, you know, the team starts sparking off each other. Like, hey, if we went into this direction, we could rethink our retail stores or we could, you know, and you're just like, wow, this is so interesting. You know, we could do pop ups in marketplaces. Really? Wow. We'd never thought about before. But we, if we're going to if we're going to really follow our purpose, why can't we do that? And so that's that's part of it. So I don't know if that's helpful, but that kind of. Gives you a bit of a flavor of how I would uh, plan and structure and then deliver on a workshop. But the key for me is the experience has to be positive for the client. You have to get to an outcome um, and move towards the objectives that have previously been agreed. And you have to make sure that um, at the end, there's a really clear next step, right? Next step follow up. Um, and then, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of how, I, how, I, how I do it. Anyway.